go ahead. Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Helena. Um, all of the organizers for this presentation couldn't be here today, but I think we have four of them. So I can give us all space to introduce ourselves very quickly. Um, I'm Helena. I'm a second year community psychology PhD student at DePaul. I'm Kat. I'm a fourth year um, clinical community psychology PhD student at DePaul. <laughs> My name is Becca. I'm a fourth year community student at DePaul. My name's Kaylee, and I'm a third year community PhD student at DePaul. Yeah, so we are all um, part of our graduate student association at DePaul University. Um, we're all leaders within our organization. Um, so that's how kind of this topic came to be. And we'll share a report on some work that we've done on this topic. First, we want to set some just very um, quick and easy ground rules for this space. Um, so we wanna address any power dynamics that may be present because there may be differing um, people in positions that you may work with at your own institutions or across institutions. So please just be mindful of whatever power dynamics are present for you in this space and be mindful of what, what power you bring to the space. Um, also, we wanna just make sure that we're centering and prioritizing graduate student voices in this conversation because it is specifically about their experiences. However, we do wanna hear, we have some discussion questions that if time permits, we may pose to some faculty as well. Um, we wanna acknowledge that we're still in this moment together. We, the things that we'll be talking about um, and our experiences are still very much happening because we're still in the pandemic. Um, so being mindful of that and just regular ground rules of please respect one another and any information that's not shared or that is shared in this that is not your own to please keep confidential and in this space. So the first thing um, that we're going to do is I'm gonna share a report in the chat. There we go. And I'm also gonna share my screen if possible. So this is a report that a few of us, um, the authors that are present on this round table did back in March, we did a quick survey to graduate students within our department. Um, and we tried to assess what accommodations were being provided, possibly what graduate students weren't getting that they needed to get, um, given the pandemic, remote learning and working and all of those things. So I'm just gonna scroll down um, just to provide you the exec executive summary. Um, so three themes emerge, um, being flexible with workload was a big one, um, making space to express genuine concern and empathy for students' well-being, and adjusting workload expectations. And then we provided some recommendations for those working with graduate students, whether it be faculty um, for graduate students who are TAing or it's their advisors that they're doing research with or whomever. So we break it also down by research assistantships and teaching assistantships. And then we also um, identified some other concerns that graduate students were facing outside of research assistantships and teaching assistantships. Um, so these are the themes that we that emerged from our survey that we did back in March. Um, we haven't done a follow up since but We'd like to use part of this space to share any additional experiences that you think are not captured by this report, um, as well as sharing experiences that are also captured within the themes that emerged. So let me stop sharing. Um, so the first question, discussion question that we have, and again, please feel free to unmute yourself or comment. Um, is oh, um, how do these results from this survey align with your experiences during the pandemic? And if there's any additional um, experiences that you think are not captured from this report. And I know some of you may be wanna still- jump. Sorry. No, uh, I was just gonna say some of you still may be reading through it and looking at it. So I understand that. 
it may take a minute, but go ahead, Kat, sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna mention, um, we kind of came together at our um, graduate student association meeting, um, actually in early April. So it, there had been um, almost maybe three weeks or so of the pandemic already underway. We're on a quarter system, so it was um, a very quick transition from the end of one quarter to the beginning of the next one um, when the pandemic hit. And so after discussing um, amongst a group of students from a diverse um, array of psychology graduate programs that we have at DePaul, we kind of were able to pick up on the fact that, um, you know, it was a challenging time for everybody, but not necessarily everybody was getting the same um, level of support or level of accommodations. So we surveyed the student body for what has been going well for you, what hasn't been going well for you, what suggestions do you have um, in terms of um, accommodations that your supervisors may be able to provide, in addition to like what other concerns are you experiencing during this time that's impacting your overall productivity. So to answer your question um, about how these results align with your experiences during the pandemic, the, um, the two pieces where did it go? The last two pieces on like um, reverse culture shock and then the workload due to online learning, I totally resonate with those. So for me, working from home was not my thing at all. I used to be the person who did everything on campus in my office with my double screens and it worked perfectly for me. So when I went home, I didn't do any work at all. And so literally having all that change in a matter of a day, it was really bad. I wasn't getting anything done. But I will say that generally speaking, um, professors and folks that I worked with at the university were very flexible and understanding of that, and I really appreciated it. Um, I can definitely, um, so I'm speaking, looking at the teaching assistantship. Uh, I agree with what has been said so far, well, in general, honestly. Um, but speaking from the teaching assistantship point, um, I did that, um, I was involved in a teaching assistantship for my final semester before I graduated, and a lot of what I found as the pandemic was like rolling out was that students weren't able to, you know, to be able to actually express what is impacting them. So like creating an opportunity for a student for turning in for turning an assignment um, into a sort of like a response piece that speaks to their lived experience with the pandemic with perhaps like a common thread of what we are talking about whether it's like directly or like reflectively of the of the like subject matter I, I found that that would be I guess contributing to the making space to express genuine concern and empathy for students well-being um giving them that voice giving them that platform instead of imposing like like that old you know that grading criteria and everything while it, it's important but like being mindful obviously yeah, thank you for sharing that, Dario, and um, Julia, for your comments as well. I want to address something that was said in the chat that a few people are experiencing is being a first year in a program and not being able to connect with current students and faculty and just being in the university space itself and connecting to the whole community. Um, of course, that wasn't captured in this report because we did it back in March, so everyone who did it had had time to be on campus, but that is a real real thing that students now are experiencing as we started the new academic year. Um, and I don't know if any of you want to share any further experiences on that or if there's been any ways that you've felt have been positive ways to connect with your current students or other faculty in your programs. Um, hi, it's Rashonda again. Um, so I'm a first, uh, first year PhD student and um, in community psychology. And one of the things I found really challenging was uh, we, of course, started the term um, during the pandemic. And so um, also I had been out of school for like seven years prior to. So it was not only adjustment getting back into school, but also starting a PhD program within a pandemic. Um, but however, I think um, the university has been really good about um, just creating spaces like they sent a ton of like student emails 
um, of ways you can get involved, virtual events, virtual, um, I think we did like a virtual orientation where you, they had breakout rooms where you could ask questions and different things like that. And I have found that the professors have been very flexible um, with uh, the, the classroom setting. For example, uh, if we were in person, our class um, hours were way longer, but they've shortened them because they understand that being on a virtual platform, it can be hard to sort of keep a student focused for a long amount of hours. So they've adjusted our schedules appropriately and things like that. So I, while it has been a, a difficult transition, I feel like the university and the professors have been uh, pretty accommodating to, to the change. So I just wanted to share that. Um, I wanted to share in, in the program that I'm, my name is Emmanuel. Um, I go by he, him, or they, there, and I'm a first year community psychology student. And uh, I have found one thing that's really helpful is that the other students in my sort of, uh, it's called CORE, but it's, it's also my CORE program, um, have met up a few times, like gone outside, gone to parks, um, had picnics, did things like that. And uh, that has been really like connecting with people on that level and uh, actually seeing people's faces. Well, wearing a mask, but has seen people's faces and being around them and uh, made me feel more um, a part of the program. The only thing that, that has been a downside is that um, with my actual cohort, um, I get, we're starting to, to plan more outings and things like that, which I unfortunately haven't been able to attend, but um, I haven't felt very connected with them. Um, and within my classes, it's been pretty difficult because you don't know really who's in your class. Um, you don't see each other and you only know if you're like in a small group, um, who's in your group. Um, so you don't really get to know other people through that way. Um, but the teachers have been pretty flexible so far and pretty understanding of the fact that they seem to be going along their original curriculum sort of, but with a lot of flexibility. Um, and that that has helped me. I don't know how it compares to the past, but it feels uh, caring. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, both of you, Rashonda and Emmanuel. Um, I hope that you have find spaces like you both have described to connect with your the current students and faculty. Um, and I hope that that could be fostered more regularly. Um, the next question I'll pose for the sake of time is um, what accommodations do you think faculty could provide that we haven't touched upon in this report that would be helpful to you personally or to your larger program or students in general? Um, for me, I think like it would be good for um, like our university to like be more concerned about people's well-being and their like mental health because I know a lot of things that we've been getting in emails have been around like oh go use these services and stuff but it's like it's not an in-house thing that they're caring about students health and well-being it's just like on a you know advisor um, student basis like you know sparse that you hear about like, oh yeah, my advisor is, you know, receptive of me getting more space for my mental health, giving me more flexibility on deadlines, but not everyone has that. And I wish it was like a um, department or program thing that everyone had to do to be uh, accommodating for everyone versus just like, if you have a good advisor relationship. Yeah, something to to mention that just to talk about what we did and how we organized. Um, after we created, did the survey and created this report, we presented it to our department and to faculty to basically explain like, this is what graduate students are experiencing right now. These are the accommodations that are helpful or could be helpful and to try to encourage them to, um, to follow the recommendations or to at least address the themes in their relationships within academics. Are there any other accommodations? A, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say that's a really important point though, because what I'm hearing coming through is like equity. Um, 
in terms of what people are able to access and what they're being provided um, during this time and able in order to make it through. Um, so I do feel like that's really important to highlight. And I'm glad you did. Yeah, I just want to echo Kat and Jasmine's sentiments. I agree. Like our report, we talked about that, but it did put the onus on the advisor student relationship. It wasn't more at the university level asking them to do these things or make it a rule. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, Chris asked a question in the chat of what was the faculty response to the report and the chair's response. Um, we, when we shared the report, it was within kind of like a breakout room um, session with some faculty and students, and then we sent it out to all of the department. And we received many thanks from, from faculty who appreciated it. Um, something we haven't done is we haven't kind of done an evaluation after the fact to see if there's been any changes to accommodations. Um, we, I mean, we talk amongst ourselves as graduate students, of course, to see how we were all doing. But I think an evaluation of if anything changed would be helpful, but we haven't done anything. But the chair and the faculty's response was positive for, for what it was. The, 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 uh, the, the chair and I think the associate chair sent out emails uh, to faculty sh uh, sharing some of the substance of of your report, uh, and I think it alerted faculty if they weren't already aware of you know what this felt like for students. And I, I saw uh, on the listserv a number of faculty, you know, as you say, responding favorably. So it was it wasn't a faculty wide mandate about doing something, but there was a, a sort of a culture shift where there was a greater awareness of what students were going through and uh, I would say exhortations from the chair and, and the associate chair that, that uh, we, sh we should uh, be flexible and understanding at this time. Um, in, in including, I think there were some faculty sharing specific situations that had ar arisen for them and, and how they tried to deal with them flexibly as kind of a, a model for other faculty. So, so I think you got a ball rolling <laughs> uh, it, with, with your report and you may, you may not have been aware of all the communication it elicited among faculty, but, but there was a, 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 from what I saw as an emeritus faculty, you know, there was a meaningful response that seemed to be moving in a good direction. So. That's really great to hear. Um, I don't, we weren't, I don't think we were aware that there was like internal dialogue happening between faculty since we sent out a report. So mm -hmm. that's really, really great to hear. We yeah. also did share this report um, via listservs, like Chris said, we shared it um, on the Scrawl listserv and I think on in some other various listservs that some of our students, the Graduate Student Association, graduate students are a part of. Um, so this report that I shared with you can be shared widely We've shared it on Twitter, um, on our, our Twitter account. Um, so yeah, feel free to share this with whomever you'd like to share it with, any listservs, any faculty, any department chairs, whomever you think is best fit. And to um, kind of wrap up, because Lucy, are we running out of time? Are we over time? You guys still have around three minutes. I was going to chime in too. <laughs> it was three minutes to wrap up. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, so just to wrap up, um, we, we want to talk about our future plans. So we're working on publishing a manuscript based on the report findings to kind of raise awareness about graduate student um, experiences and accommodations that can be given during this time. Um, also, we can provide you a template of our survey and what we did if you're interested um, in doing a similar survey at your institution. You can email me putting in my email in the chat right now. And I can share the template of the survey that we distributed to our graduate students. Um, and also within that same vein, sharing the report and also just encouraging conversations within your academic spaces to talk more about 
what we're experiencing in a more transparent way and to build solidarity because we're all going through it and we shouldn't um, pretend that we're not. Um, and our experiences are real and they're still happening because we're still experiencing the pandemic. So yeah. Thank you all though for sharing your experiences. Does anybody have any last questions for these group? Well, thank you so much, guys. I think it's uh, amazing how you're taking um, really action steps into helping students because one thing is awareness and another thing is really actually making a difference for students and instructors too and professors because obviously we're all going through this together. And yes, the consequences are affecting everybody. So, um, I'm going to stop the recording.